Hello everyone. Uh, just uh, today I was reading uh, an article that was talking about how the uh, Trudeau-led Liberals are actually starting to work on their promise of electoral reform for federal elections. Now, I don't actually have a problem with the notion of electoral reform. Uh, the first past the post system that we use, that is whoever gets the highest number of votes, whether it's more than half or not, wins the election. That does have some issues. Uh, what it means is that when you have more than two candidates, usually you're going to have one candidate gets the most votes out of all of them, but has less than half, which means more than half the people didn't want that candidate in and yet he's in anyway. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that the first past the post system is unfair. Uh, if you can only choose one candidate for one situation, and you have a large list, and you can only run one vote, it's probably reasonably fair. Uh, because nobody's going to be happy with the result in that case, normally. More fair, though, is uh, you would uh, take the results of the first vote, throw out uh, the bottom however many based on some criteria, and run another vote, and then see if the, the votes that were invalidated shift to one or the other candidate, and you keep doing that until you're down to two, or somebody gets 50% or more of the votes. If somebody gets more than 50% on the first ballot, the first vote, well, then you've got a winner. If not, you eliminate some number and you try again. You keep trying until somebody gets more than 50%. And the only time this breaks down is if you're down to two candidates and you get a dead even split, which is possible. And then you have some sort of method to uh, break the tie in that case because you have to do something then. Now, uh, in a general election, multiple votes are generally not practical because it takes too long to, to do the polling. You do the polling and then you, you find out that nobody won that, that riding. Now you've got to do the polling again and that means you've got to set it all up. You've got to get the information out. And it gets really problematic. The, that type of system works better if it's at some sort of a convention where you've got uh, the, the voters are all present and the votes can be tallied quickly, and everyone stays there until the decision is made. And that's how a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, candidates are selected by political parties and things like that. Now, there are other ways you can do things as well. You can have uh, preferential ranking on the ballots. Uh, so I can say, well, this guy I like the best, this guy is my second choice, this guy is my third choice, and so on. Then you apply some math to it and you get a result in the uh, final uh, numbers. There are, of course, other things you can do, uh, things like proportional representation, where you take the popular vote across a whole range of, uh, of say, uh, districts, and you apportion out the candidates based on how much of the popular vote across all districts that a particular party, for instance, would have received. The problem with that is it does not work if you have independence. If you have people that are not part of any party, it does not work. So uh, it, it assumes that parties are mandatory. And that I have a problem with. Uh, our parliamentary system is actually poorly served by political parties. And, uh, you know, we would actually have better government if all votes in the commons 
were mandatory free votes. And if party, uh, party membership did not determine the prime minister. Uh, and here's the thing. There's no actual rules that state that it has to be that way. It's just a traditional choice that the governor general or the queen or king makes after a general election. Uh, as it, 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 theoretically, anybody uh, could be uh, prime minister uh, and have nothing to do with the, the party with the most seats. Anyway, proportional representation sounds great, but it has a problem when you are faced with independent candidates because independent candidates are not affiliated with each other. So you can't take several electoral districts which have independent candidates running and somehow expect that to work. Because if the independent would win a particular district, they're not going to have the proportional votes to get elected in the overall system. So to do a proportional representation situation in when you have no parties and so on, well, everybody with an agenda is going to have to present some number of candidates at every district, and that's just not workable. So I don't think we're going to end up with a proportional uh, representation scheme because it breaks down when party affiliations are not present. And it actually locks out independent uh, candidates from even being able to run. You'd have to be a member of a party then. You'd have to have parties to do that. And as I said, that breaks the parliamentary system. Uh, you know, I, I think the fact that we have parties in the first place is a problem. Uh, we should, quite frankly, not be listing party affiliation on ballots uh, and, or anything like that. It should just be names alphabetically, no other information on the ballot. If you want to vote for a party, you've got to know who your candidate is. Now, all of that is just how do we tally the ballots? How do we tally the votes? What do we do with the tally when we've added them up? And that's not an easy problem. And that's probably why we've stuck with the first past the post system so long. It's a hard problem to solve. But there's other things that they're talking about other than just changing how we tally the votes and calculate who is actually going to be in Parliament. There's actually talk about mandatory voting. And I think of all of the ideas being floated right now, mandatory voting is the absolute stupidest idea we could possibly put forward. The problem with mandatory voting is it requires everybody to vote and make a choice. The problem is that sometimes you're unable to, so there'd have to be some sort of an exception there. And sometimes you don't bloody care. And this is where it breaks down. I would much rather have 10% of the population vote, but cast informed votes than to have 95% of the population vote with 90% of them casting some random vote based on popularity. And that's what will happen with mandatory voting. So we should not do that. If we want a decent government chosen by people that are actually paying attention to what's going on, then mandatory voting cannot be, we can't do it. Uh, that just, it won't work. We'll have worse government. We'll have, it, it'll be even more of a popularity contest than it already is. And that's, that would be doing ourselves a disservice. Uh, now, you, the argument is usually made that democracy doesn't work if people don't vote. Well, that's true. If people don't vote, if nobody votes, democracy doesn't work. Or more precisely, it works perfectly. Uh, if nobody votes, it means nobody cares and nothing happens. Um, 
And uh, I wonder what our election system would do if you had zero voter turnout at an election. Uh, I think that'd just mean there'd be no candidate elected and there'd have to be a by-election right away. Um, but that would be working perfectly because if nobody's voting, then clearly there's nobody to represent. Uh, now, that's not obviously going to happen, it, you know. But, see, the thing is, if uninformed people vote, now they're making decisions on something they know absolutely nothing about because they haven't taken the bother to learn anything about the issues. And they're just voting based on party ideology or what have you. Now, that's not really all that much different than the uh, majority of the voters that actually turn out today. But if you force everybody to vote, they're just going to make some sort of a, a, a snap decision based on the last TV ad they saw or something like that. And or what their buddy told them to, to vote or something like that and they'll just wander up and uh, mark something on the ballot or something like that. And I suspect also that if we have mandatory voting, we're going to see a market uptick in spoiled ballots. If you spoil your ballot, it's not you didn't it's not that you didn't uh, go to vote. It means that can be a vote on its own, spoiling the ballot. Uh, and it, if, you, uh, if you're, you now start tracking who spoiled the ballot and finding them for it, now you've no longer got a secret ballot system. And, I, and for, for this to work, for democracy to work properly, ballots have to be secret. And that means it has to be secret from everybody, including the authorities. So, uh, yes, you need to track to make sure someone's not voting twice. You know, the old vote early, vote often thing. You have to track that, but you track that at the door. Once the person's in, all identifying uh, marks on the ballot are removed and they cast their vote and put it in the ballot box. And then what the people counting the, the votes have no idea who cast a particular ballot unless you put some sort of identifying mark on it. And that's actually forbidden. So, at least as I understand it, that's forbidden. That would make it a spoiled ballot. Uh, so, we couldn't actually say that spoiling ballots is forbidden because we'd have no way to enforce it because there'd be no way to know who spoiled a ballot. So I suspect there would be a protest against mandatory voting, and I think we'd see a fairly substantial number of spoiled ballots. Now, I wonder what that would mean for the legitimacy of the results if you, if you had, uh, say, 95% voter turnout and 70% of the ballots are spoiled. That would be an interesting thing, because that'd be no different then a 20, 25 or 30 percent voter turnout, uh, because you're still only counting 25 or 30 percent. And if those people that don't care cast a statistically random vote on on their ballots, well, it's going to completely, assuming the first past the post system uh, persists, a statistically random vote, uh, people just literally randomly select a name on the ballot means that it's not going to change the outcome because that large number of people that don't care, they'll just tick off a random number and average over a reasonably large number of people. That's going to be approximately the same number of votes for every candidate or at least every serious candidate. And that means that it's not going to change the results at all. Uh, except to make the gaps between candidates uh, proportionally smaller. And I'm not sure that that's beneficial either. So I definitely do not think we should be doing mandatory voting. It's stupid. 
and we just should not do it because it leads to a much larger proportion of votes being cast by uninformed voters. Sure, uh, on paper it looks like a good idea to make sure you get a larger cross-section of the population out and you get everybody out and make sure that it's not a few old fogies uh, voting for everything. But that's not going to make people care and that's the problem. Uh, mandatory voting is not going to improve the results of our elections. What we need to do is get people to care enough to vote. And I'm not sure how we do that because we've been trying to do that for decades and it's just not happening. So that means there's something about our political process that's fundamentally broken. Now changing how we tally the votes and how representatives are apportioned in the House of Commons, that may help and it probably will make a difference. But what I think would make a bigger difference is if you could really vote for your personal favorite candidate uh, whether it's because of a popularity contest or because you think that they're the best to represent your riding. And have that not mean that the candidate is totally unable to represent you because they happen to be on the back bench of the opposition and have no say. I think the biggest boon we could do for our political system is to abolish political parties entirely. And if we did that, like ab abolish the status afforded to political parties in the commons, uh, we make party whips illegal so that you can't force your party members to vote the party line. And we change it so that we elect the prime minister separately to the uh, individual representatives for each riding. I think if we did that, we would get better uh, turnout in the, in, from a lot of the voters. Because as it stands right now, people know that if they don't support the party that's likely to win, there's no point voting. Because uh, if their candidate gets in, they have no voice. If, however the prime minister was selected independently, you could get a conservative prime minister and a majority liberal parliament, and they'd have to work together. Uh, this would require a little bit more than just saying, hey, we're going to elect the prime minister. There, um, but you'd also have to, you, you know, you'd have the uh, situation where the prime minister still has to make his cabinet, but it uh, you have to say that you can't necessarily, you can't just pick from your own party or you're not required to pick from your own party because parties don't have status in the commons. If we did that, I think we'd have a much better government. Uh, yes, we could have some issues and there'd have to be some issues uh, resolved about how we deal with things like uh, confidence votes and so on. But I don't think there'd have to be a significant number of changes made to make such a system work. I haven't actually done the due diligence and worked out the specific details that would have to happen. But the key thing is we need to not duplicate the U.S. system because that doesn't work. Um, so uh, we need to make sure that we don't give too much power to the Prime Minister. And we need to make sure that we don't hamstring the Prime Minister. We need to make sure we don't give too much power to Commons, make sure we don't hamstring the Commons. You know, and as part of this whole thing, I think that it'd be reasonable that there be some reforms to the Senate as well, uh, in that every province should have equal representation in the Senate, not regions having equal representation in the Senate. Uh, for instance, uh, the prairies, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, I believe, are one region as far as the Senate is concerned uh, for apportioning senators. The problem there is that Alberta 
in Saskatchewan have diametrically opposite ideological uh, baselines. And that means that you're not getting proper representation for Alberta and Saskatchewan with differing views because of that representational thing. Now, there's some issues with Senate reform like that because there's some, some uh, uh, agreements that mean Quebec gets X number of uh, commons representatives and so on, and we need to abolish some of those too. Uh, as I recall, Quebec is guaranteed 25% of the seats in the commons, even if they happen to have less than 25% of the population of the country. And uh, other provinces have uh, other guarantee levels as well. And I think we need to abolish those as well. But that requires potentially a constitutional uh, amendment, and that's hard. And certainly uh, Quebec's not going to go for that. Um, unless their population has exceeded 25% of the, uh, the national population now, and then they might. Uh, but, you know, that's the, uh, the thing. Like, uh, and other provinces, uh, the ones that have constitutional vetoes at least, uh, I can't remember if that's all of them or just a few of them, but the constitutional vetoes would make it very difficult to get changes through. But there's a lot of things that we could change that would make the political system more robust. Uh, one, another thing I don't think we should necessarily do is go for a popularly elected Senate uh, because uh, the point of it is, uh, or at least the Senate uh, members can't be on the same type of rotating term that the Commons uh, representatives are because we need certain, uh, uh, they need not to be beholden to special interests and so on. Uh, they're supposed to be uh, there to give a second thought, some checks on what the commons might do. Only problem is the Senate cannot block uh, a legislation at all. And that is uh, potentially uh, problematic, although in practice it hasn't been significantly. Uh, although, at, although in practice I think the... Uh, the Crown or the Viceroy, uh, which is the Governor General, could block a legislation. Uh, there, there's a whole bunch of nonsense with our political system, as, as there is with most. But anyway, uh, it looks like the, the Liberals did promise electoral reform, and it looks like they're at least uh, pretending to act on it by striking a committee to, uh, to study it. And they want to... Uh, um, I guess, consult in every writing and so on. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, I suspect uh, that there's going to be a lot of gnashing and wailing and whining and hand-wringing about it. So we'll see what comes out of that. And I'm interested to see what the recommendations actually are. I'm hoping mandatory voting will not be one of them because it's, it's a stupid idea and it will cause us as many problems as it solves. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, forcing me to vote is just going to piss me off if I don't want to. Uh, I have historically voted in the federal election, so it won't affect me one way or the other. But I know of many people who simply don't, know, don't pay attention to politics enough to have any idea what's going on. And, and uh, they don't want to vote, but if you force them to, uh, you're just going to annoy them. It's just common sense, you know. If you annoy the voters, they're not going to make a sensible decision, right? Or maybe the sensible decision is to, uh, you know, is disobedience or something like that. And I don't think the cost of enforcement is worth it either. And then again, how do you know if someone has voted or not, uh, if they haven't voted, if they're not on the list of electors, right? Uh, if they didn't actually register. So uh, anyway, mandatory voting, I hope they don't suggest. 
Um, I'll be interested to see what they suggest for vote tallies and so on, but I hope they make sure that they come up with something that keeps in place the possibility of an unaffiliated independent candidate having a chance at winning a riding. Is it because it does happen and it has happened? Uh, I know they're not going to come up with the notion of abolishing political parties because the political parties are entrenched in the system, but uh, I can hope. And they're certainly not going to be talking about Senate reform and so on because that's not the purpose of the committee. But, you know, the end result, uh, I guess, we'll, we'll know relatively soon. Uh, they'll have to be have a have a uh, decision on what they're going to do for electoral reform soon enough that Elections Canada can uh, tool up uh, to actually implement it for the next election because that's apparently the, what the promise was. I wasn't paying attention to that bit during the election. I didn't actually vote for the Liberals either, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I guess the promise was that the next election would be under a new system. So this committee is going to have to report back real quick uh, so that the government can actually make a decision and formulate the proper legislation. And then, then that can be passed to get royal assent in time for Elections Canada to actually implement it in time for the next election. And that's, that's uh, under four years. And that's a short time frame for something like that, to get a massive uh, bureaucratic instrument like that to move. But it'll be interesting, is if it does pan out, uh, we'll be able, we, the next election will be trying something different. And uh, hopefully, it's better. Fortunately, if it fails miserably, it doesn't have to stay forever. We can always change it again. Although that could be difficult. But uh, we'll see what happens. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. Because I do agree that the first past the post system that we currently use is not the fairest we could be using. Uh, and many times uh, you've, we've had cases where it should have been a majority government by a popular vote, but the way the votes tallied up, we got a minority. Or the other way around, where you get a massive majority when it should have been either a slim one or a minority. Uh, or you'll get one wins the minority, but the other one should have by popular vote. So uh, if we can come up with a solution to that type of problem, uh, I think we have, a, uh, we have a shot at maybe getting more people engaged. Uh, but at the very least, it should be a fairer system. Anyway, uh, that's as much as I'm going to ramble on about on, on this particular topic. Uh, it's uh, a very polarizing one. Uh, and I, I may end up doing a follow-up on this one uh, after I've thought about it or I, if I get some responses or so on. But anyway, that's all for, for now. Uh, it, make sure you subscribe to be notified of future videos. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.